The following long-range weather forecast that I'll be presenting for you today was created based off of my own research of climate anomalies that will be responsible for influencing European weather for the spring season of 2024. Due to the unpredictable and ever-changing nature of weather, especially in the longer term, these predictions shouldn't be taken as a prophecy. Nonetheless, if you do enjoy the following video, then definitely consider subscribing with that notification bell on so you never miss my consistent weather forecasts. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. One thing I always like to emphasize when I make a long-range forecast is the correlation between big climate anomalies like NAO or the polar vortex, and then our weather patterns on the surface. As we transition from the winter into the spring, it's very typical to see big shifts, especially in March and April, and that's of course because of the warmer air trying to make a comeback. The spring season of 2024 will be no different in the sense that there's going to be lots of changes happening, but there are a couple factors that are quite different compared to previous years, so I've chosen two of them to talk about in this video, one of which is the sea surface temperatures. The temperature of the ocean is very important, especially for us in Europe, because that's one of the biggest factors in keeping the European continent relatively mild. That explains why the collapse of a critical ocean current called AMOC would quickly turn Europe into a much colder and snowier place. But anyways, the point of showing you this map is for you to take note of how much warmer than normal the sea surface temperatures are. Just look at all those orange and even red shades that extend from the Caribbean all the way to the Canary Islands. As a matter of fact, the temperature of the Atlantic Ocean right now actually resembles what it should look like in the month of July. To make matters worse, sea surface temperatures are actually higher than they've ever been in recorded history at this point in the year. Could this exceptional warmth across the Atlantic Ocean be the reason for well above average temperatures across many parts of Europe this winter? It's quite possible. So following the same line of reasoning, then it would make sense to believe that these above normal temperatures would persist into the spring, summer, and perhaps even beyond. We're going to talk more about the temperature trends later on, but for now let's get an update on the stratospheric polar vortex. The stratospheric polar vortex is an area of low pressure and cold air that is present over both of the Earth's poles. I actually made a video specifically explaining this back in December, so if you would like to see that, I have a link in the description. The stratospheric polar vortex disappears once winter ends, and that's actually happening right now as you can see on the current weather model information. That orange shade over the North Pole indicates high pressure, which has completely displaced and disrupted the vortex. We will likely continue to see this fizzle out before ultimately disappearing, not making an appearance again until the late autumn of 2024. So why does this matter to us now? A phenomenon called a sudden stratospheric warming event happened more than once this year. The first time was in January, which is actually what prompted me to make my polar vortex video in late December. And then it happened for the second time in February, and yet again this month. Two sudden stratospheric warming events in one winter is already quite rare, but having it for the third time is extremely rare. In fact, this was dubbed a once in a 250 year event. Some of these SSW events led to a negative phase of the NAO, which is a weather pattern that was lacking a lot this winter. A negative NAO is often associated with high pressure or blocking over higher latitudes. This pushes the storm track further south, and if you recall, we saw exactly that happen earlier this month. This specific weather pattern has since disappeared, but it's very possible that this will return heading through the rest of March and even into April as the lingering effects of this third SSW persist. With that insight in mind, let's move on to Chapter 2 so we can discuss the month of March. For the March 18th through the 25th time frame, a series of Atlantic storms will continue to move northeastward, impacting Ireland, the United Kingdom, Iceland, and eventually Scandinavia. Models have also suggested one of these storms breaking off from that overall northeastward movement, allowing it to drift southward towards the Iberian Peninsula and northern Africa by March 20th. Then, once we pass March 21st, we may start seeing that storm track sink a little bit further south, and as that happens, you will notice some colder air sink down with it. It's unclear exactly how this will unfold, especially since it's several days away, so we're just going to have to watch trends in the coming days. 
This is the precipitation outlook I created for this time frame. Wetter than average conditions are most probable from Iceland and Scandinavia down into mainland Europe, with a separate area over the Middle East. I also extended that green shade into Eastern Europe as a storm meanders in that region. And lastly, we see some hints of green around Madeira Island, which is a sign of that cutoff low spinning around that area for a few days. Temperatures are likely to be well above average for most of us, with the only exception being southeastern Europe, especially around Turkey, extending into northeastern Africa and the Middle East. That's going to be a result of that storm system moving through. Now heading back to this map, let's get a quick overview of what things could look like after March 25th. First off, we may continue to see a storm system sink southward out of the Nordic countries, so we're going to have to watch out for some colder air on the backside of those systems. Then, it won't take long for another mass of Atlantic storms to come in, and some of the more recent model information is suggesting that we will see something along these lines sticking around until the end of the month. My precipitation outlook for March 25th through the 31st reflects what the latest weather model information is showing, with wetter conditions likely from Iceland all the way down to North Africa and even as far east as the Adriatic Sea, Regarding the temperatures, you can see a significant decrease in those orange and red shades, especially the further west you go. And that could be a result of those persistent Atlantic storms pulling in colder air not only from the north, but also from the west. I'm expecting wetter than average conditions all across the green shade, extending from western Europe to the Middle East. Drier conditions can be expected in far northern areas of the United Kingdom and Ireland, the Nordic countries, and many areas around the Mediterranean, especially Greece and eastern Spain. The darker green shade that I added over Iberia is where I think the greatest chance for well above average precipitation will be, which can be attributed to increased storm activity due to episodes of strong blocking to the north. Now for the temperatures, I think that record warmth in the Atlantic may play at least some role in this outlook with widespread above-average temperatures likely across Europe. The orange shade, which covers much of the European continent, is where I think that above-average temperatures are going to be possible, but I have excluded the Nordic countries mainly because of the chance of some colder air events in April with that negative NAO phase. Even still, when we don't have a negative NAO ongoing, above-average temperatures would probably take over this region, so I definitely wouldn't expect only below-average temperatures throughout the entire month. The next orange shade that I added is where I have greater confidence in well above normal temperatures, and that extends from northern Africa up into central Europe, and everywhere east of there. The biggest reason why I didn't include western Europe in the deeper orange shade is because of the constant Atlantic storms helping mitigate the temperatures somewhat, maybe even bringing cooler than average conditions at times, but that won't be as pronounced the further inland you go. Lastly, the red shade is where I think we have the highest chance at seeing some well above average temperatures in April, and that is in place from northern Africa through the Balkans and into western Russia. Once you get into May, things are still uncertain at this time, but I have a pretty good guess on what to expect. Starting with precipitation patterns, I think it's going to change significantly from what we saw in April. Rather than wetter conditions being focused slightly further south, I think we're going to see an increase in storm activity further north. That doesn't apply to everyone though, because some areas like Greece and Turkey which were a bit drier in April could see more action in May, and the same goes for other parts of the Balkans. As that occurs, the Iberian Peninsula and some surrounding areas such as northern Africa, France, and parts of Italy could see a decrease in precipitation. Moving on to temperature trends, I think it's pretty reasonable to believe that all of Europe is going to be overtaken by above normal temperatures at this point, now that we will be through the worst of the temperature battles of early to mid-spring. The darker orange shade which encompasses most of Europe is where I think there's an even greater chance of temperatures surpassing the average, and that excludes far western areas of Europe, mostly due to the chance of Atlantic systems. And then lastly, a very large red area covers North Africa into southern Europe, and that's where I think above normal temperatures will be most pronounced. That's going to conclude my official spring weather forecast for Europe. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm sure you're going to like my upcoming forecasts not only for the long range, but also for the shorter range. This video took a lot of work between researching, graphic design, and then editing, so leaving a like is always appreciated, especially on videos like these. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.